In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What think you of Christ? Whose son is he? Our Lord puts a riddle to the Pharisees. He wants to lead them slowly to realize that he is God. It was not easy for them to understand and to believe. And frankly, it is not much easier for us either. We know and we believe that the Lord Jesus is the true Son of God and also is the true Son of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is the dogma of the Incarnation when the Word was made flesh. The revelation of the Incarnation of God made man literally is so overwhelming that even believers may spend years professing this truth while not really getting very deep into it. More or less, I believe, this is the case for all of us here. So we reflect on this this Sunday. Let us hear the question again asked by our Lord to the Pharisees, but also to us this morning. Whose son is Christ? If King David calls the Christ, the Messiah, Lord, how can the same Messiah be the son of David? Because in that context, Lord means God. Lord is a divine title. Either the Messiah is the son of David, a king, but after all, just a human being, or, or the Messiah is God. The only solution to the riddle is that the Messiah is both son of David and son of God. Christ the Messiah is son of David according to his human nature and Christ the Messiah is God according to his divine nature. The mystery here is that God Almighty, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, God the Son, lowered himself to assume our human nature. It is what we call the Incarnation. It is the center of our faith. This is why in a few minutes we will bow our knee during the creed at the words et incarnatus as de spiritu sancto ex maria virgine et homo factus est. Who is Christ? Jesus Christ is the second person of the Holy Trinity, God the Son, as made man. As man, therefore, Jesus Christ did not always exist. Before our Blessed Lady said yes to Archangel Gabriel at the Annunciation on the 25th of March, Christ as man did not exist. Just like you and I did not exist until we were conceived in our mother's wombs. Only from the moment our Blessed Lady answered fiat to the Archangel did Jesus start to exist as man now, of course, as God, as the Word eternal, He always existed. Even before the Incarnation, He existed. But then, He was not called Jesus. He was called the Word eternal. And He had 
no mother, no Blessed Virgin Mary. He only had his Divine Father, God the Father. When becoming man in the virginal womb of our Blessed Lady, the Word Eternal did not cease to be God. He did not lose any of his divine powers or prerogatives. His divine nature remained intact. You can look at a depiction of him on either side of the tabernacle with the nativity on the left and the adoration of the Magi on the right. See the tiny little carved infant. He represents God the Son as made man. And yet, his divine nature remains intact, however small and vulnerable he is as a man. God the Son was almighty before becoming man. Since becoming man in Jesus Christ, God the Son is still almighty. God the Son was eternal before becoming man. Since becoming man in Jesus Christ, God the Son is still eternal. God the Son knew everything before becoming man. Since becoming man in Jesus Christ, God the Son still knows everything. Simply, he chose not to make use of his divine powers since becoming man, apart from the signs he granted us to help our faith, the miracles. Those do require divine power. But apart from that, the Lord Jesus led a very ordinary life to the point that his enemies scorned his obscure origin and his low standing, saying, Is he not the carpenter's son? So Christ is true man and true God. When we pray to the Lord Jesus, we must make an effort to realize that the face we see depicted on an icon or sculpted in wood is meant to represent the very face of God. Remember what he answered his apostle. Jesus saith to Philip, Have I been so long a time with you, and have you not known me? Philip, he that seeth me seeth the Father also. How sayest thou, show us the Father? Let us be frank. It takes time and effort for these words to sink into our mind and heart. Let us repeat these stupendous, shocking revelation. Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord. He that seeth Jesus sees the Father also. Before concluding, let me explain a few consequences from that truth. All that Jesus told us in the Holy Gospels is true and will last forever. All that contradicts the Holy Gospels is false and shall perish. The moral law taught us by the Lord Jesus is the very law of God, heard from the very mouth of God. For instance, about keeping the Sunday holy, on the sin of adultery, on the love of neighbor, and the duty to forgive, etc. These commandments will never be updated or adapted. 
They are the good news of God himself to us, his creatures. It is the good news of how to become happy in this life and to secure blessedness in eternity. No man will ever have any power to contradict or modify or twist these sacred laws taught us by the Lord Jesus, God himself, or whatever power is exercised against it will come to an end before judgment. Since Christ is God, here is another momentous consequence. There is no salvation outside of Christ. And Christ chose to be found in and through the Holy Catholic Church he founded. Thus, there can be no salvation outside Holy Church. All men have a duty to seek the truth, and the truth is found only in the teaching and the person of Christ the Lord, communicated by his Holy Church. All of us, men and women, who had the grace of discovering Christ and his church, have a grave obligation to share this good news with as many fellow men as we can. To start with, we must pray daily for all men to be evangelized and to become Catholics. This is the will of God. God is just, and if, without any fault on their parts, some people don't know Christ and his church, Christ can find ways to reach out to them, but, but he will ask an account from us if we have failed to pray and to bear witness to his gospel, to lead all men to him. St. Paul, the greatest preacher of all times, confessed, for if I preach the gospel, it is no glory to me, for a necessity lies upon me, for woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Each of us could sit down quietly during this Holy Mass, or later today, and in the silence of his heart, repeat the momentous words, Christ is Lord. Christ is Lord. Christ is Lord. We can meditate on the consequences only Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody else can save the world. No man is even of any use to the world save through serving Christ and his holy church. Conclusion. Dear friends, Christ is God. But God is love. Therefore, to serve Christ is to abide in true love. This abiding in divine love is proven through practical love for our brethren, our fellow men. Let us make a strong resolve today to spend time with the Lord Jesus every day. Let us take at least a few minutes every morning to speak to him with our own words and to listen to him. If we don't know what to say, let us simply repeat the words we will speak before Holy Communion at Holy Mass. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Say but the word and my soul shall be healed. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.